had to build up Temple uh, off the bottom. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we had a lot of success, but we had a lot of success because we were able to recruit players, and a lot of them from New Jersey. Okay, and a lot, and so many guys, you know, not in this room as well, but uh, so many guys trusted us with their players over time. Particularly, you know, at Temple, we had probably over 30 guys at one point, and really put us in a position uh, to be at a place like Miami, uh, where we're at right now. So I can't, you know, I can't thank the New Jersey coaches enough again for sending us our kids. And, just being around and really being supportive. Okay, we've 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 been very fortunate. Al and I have been really really fortunate that we've had so much support. Guys keep in touch with us. Guys uh, believe in us and, and send us their kids, and uh, that's why we've had so so much success. But this is a place that I'm hoping to uh, settle in for a long time. Okay, it's a, it's a place that's really uh, you know in my mind second to none as far as the history goes. Okay, eight, eight players drafted in a seven and sixteen uh, second in, second in uh, college football this past year. Uh, 275 all-time players, five national championships, played for nine in the last 30 years. Uh, a top 50 university, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, one of the top, you know, uh, Billy, I know, spoke earlier, but Boston College is ranked 46 university in the country. Miami's ranked 47. Most people up here wouldn't know that. 10,000 students, a private school. It's $55,000 a year scholarships. Okay, in a beautiful place. So that's what a lot of people don't know. It's 25 minutes uh, south of Miami, okay, out of the city and away from the beach, but close enough. So. Uh, those are all the things that we went down there for, and, and we bought, and we're selling, okay? Because it, it is it is a place, and it's a uh, it's unbelievable. 300 alumni uh, back at the spring game. Jimmy Johnson talked to our team the night before the spring game. Michael Irvin talked to our team the day of the spring game. Uh, you know, you go down to the weight room and you see John Billman, John Beeson, and McKay and Gore, and all these guys working out, and Greg Olson, and um, it's just it's just a, a really unique place. So we're looking forward again. We want to bring the talent in South Florida, and we want to combine that with the toughness. Okay, and the talent that we have right here that we know. Okay, we we want to put that together. We're gonna we're gonna work hard in this area to recruit your players. So, uh, if you guys have any players that you want to send to me, please. It doesn't matter what class. They're gonna be freshmen. They're gonna be sophomores. Whatever it is, please get the names to me. Get the information so we can have them on our system and we can track. Them. Okay. Also, my email is coach d coach d at miami.edu. Coach d at miami.edu. I got tired of uh, teaching kids how to spell my name with the apostrophe and the capital O and all that business. So. I finally got smart in my old age, and I went Coach D at Miami.edu. If you guys need anything from us, please email me. Uh, we did a defensive fundamental tape uh, for the NFL last year, tackling, ball disruption, all that kind of stuff. Some of you guys have it, I know. Um, I don't have copies with me, but if you want me to send one, I, I kept a bunch on file down there. Uh, I can show you all the drills and fundamentals that we do. Email me, I'll make sure I have... Uh, Anybody, any college coaches in here from the ACC or somebody that's on our schedule in the next few years? I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Sorry about that. <laughs> anybody? I don't see anybody behind. Has McGovern got a, a mask on? Where's Maducci? We played Florida in 2013. You don't like McGovern in here? All right, good. All right, we're ready to go. All right, guys, I always try to pick a topic that I feel like everybody can get something out of. I'm not going to come up here and spew a whole bunch of BS and something that we don't do. Okay, last time I was up uh, in the area, I did a lot of defensive fundamentals, the drills we do every day. Uh, here I want to be able to talk about the pressure package uh, that we use out of the odd front. Okay, I wanted to be able to find something. Obviously, uh, everybody's playing different defenses, but uh, to base it here out of the odd front and what we did here last year at Temple, okay, can really translate over to some of you guys who played a 3-3, and it can also trans uh, translate over to some of you guys who play 4-3, but we'll get in an under front. Okay, or we'll get in a uh, you know a field or boundary front by putting your three technique into the boundary and be able to run those pressures. So it should be a little something for everybody, no matter what scheme uh, that you're in. Okay, I want to be able to talk about utilizing the pressure package and attacking where you want to attack out of the 3-4 defense. Okay, attacking where you want to attack out of the 3-4 defense. The 3-4 defense is the only defense that is truly balanced, okay, which presents all kinds of problems for the offense as far as where who's the fourth rusher, who's the fifth rusher, the sixth rusher, etc. Okay, and allows you, because you're in a balanced defense, to attack specific areas, the tight end side, a back, an open side, etc. Okay, so uh, there's nothing better than, uh, than being able to watch video. Okay, so I put a bunch of video here together from our last season at Temple. Obviously, I've got the hurricane colors right now, but you're going to see some of the Temple owls running around here. Okay? All right, um, here we go. The first blitz I want to talk about is, is uh, inside linebacker and outside linebacker from the same side. And again, everybody in the country has been running this pressure probably for the last 15 years, and it still works. Okay, it still works, and it can specifically if you run it well and the technique's good, okay, and you have a great technique, okay. When I say fire zone coverage throughout this presentation, I'm talking about three under three deep. Okay, three under three deep, and a bunch of people play it different ways, but when you're bringing a fifth rusher, which I'm showing you here, and playing what we call fire zone coverage, okay, that's three under three deep. Okay, all right. Here specifically, I'm going to show how we attack to the tight end side. 
All right, so here I've got us in a, in a doubles formation, okay, with three wideouts to give you an idea, okay, of where we tried to attack. Okay, here's the tight end. All right, now, as far as the calls, well, I'm not giving you the names of our pressures. You guys can make up what you want, but I would say this. Uh, keep them in the same family, okay? Make them all colors, make them all cities, make them all states, make them all animals, whatever it is, and try to keep your pressures consistent uh, in that regard, okay? And then uh, where you want to attack, again, you could call tight on the front of that call. Let's say the pressure you want to call here is red, and you can say tight red. Okay, that means we want to attack the tight end side. Okay, and simply make your call based on how you make a, a right or left call. Everybody has different words for it, right? Ray, Lou, Ralph, Lucy, whatever it may be. Okay, so easy, easy, easy to do that. All right, so here we're bringing the inside linebacker, okay, and the outside linebacker, both from the tight end side, okay. The front side defensive end, we're running what we call a long stick, okay, where he's going two gaps. He's actually going to be in a five technique, and again, if you have a guy who needs to align to execute, get him heavier, get him in a four technique, okay, and just have enough stuff where you're moving him outside and inside so you're not giving it away all the time, but you can get him to align to execute. He's coming down the A gap. The linebacker here, okay, we tell him to chase the long stick, okay. I'm going to use Mike Rich. Uh, in the back was my uh, linebacker coach back in 1985 uh, uh, and six. Okay, and I still say it. Okay, and this is growing up in North Bergen. Would have guessed you, but scrape so tight you can steal his wallet. Mike, <laughs> you taught me that in 1985. I still use it. I got to be careful down in Miami with that one. All right. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we want to scrape that thing really tight. The nose is what, running what we call a rack. And again, just the terms we call that rack, and that's run across the center. Real simple. So if you had a nose shaded here, rack, run across the center, okay? If this guy was a tackle in the three technique, we call it a lap, loop around the tackle. How about that, how easy is that? Rack and lap, run across the center, lap. So that way if the guy has a lap, you could have a number of pressures where he runs a lap and then you're teaching the same technique. It's the same footwork, it's the same movement. You could have five different pressures where that tackle knows that's what he's running. So you keep it simple for him that way. Okay, we're ending up with three underneath, like I talked about our scene player. Guys, it's very similar to uh, you know, if you guys, any of you guys play quarters coverage, but if he's a curl flat player, he has responsibility on the wheel. Or three hook player means he's going to match the number three receiver and any first threat to the hook on either side. Okay, and over here is the opposite seam player. You can draw these up to your blue in the face. If you have five pressure guys, okay, and then in addition you have three underneath, okay, you can make them go wherever you want and it fits your scheme. Okay, on the back end we're playing uh, what we call a hot third. Okay, this guy's responsible for a third like he is in 3D. But when we say hot third, we're expecting the ball to come out quick. Okay, so we don't want that guy 86 yards off, backing up, okay, and thinking he's going to get beat. Again, we're trying to design the pressure to, come, to get the ball out quickly. Okay, we want that guy to be able to break, okay, on the three-step. Okay, so that's why we call it a hot third as opposed to just playing a deep third. All right, and obviously this guy's in the middle. Okay, all right, give you an idea again, we're trying to attack the closed side right here. Okay, so right now our indication, we would use our word that would trigger us blitzing from the right side. So this guy knows he's to the call, he's running the long stick. Okay, the other guy's running a rack right here. This guy's contained opposite. He's contained here and he's going to chase the long stick. Seam, three hook, seam. Okay, this is a good clip. The ball's out quick, but I want to show you the pressure path that this guy's running right now. So again, the ball is coming out quick. Okay, you're throwing the ball to the flat. All right, I want to show you from behind, but you can see how it, how it ends up coming. The ball's out quick, but here's our seam player. He's our one underneath the play, uh, defender, our three hook player. Again, he was working off a of number three who was in the backfield, and now he's reading that quarterback size and working to the hook, okay, and our other seam player. And we talk about the seam player, the longer the route goes, that's the guy we say he wants to hold the seam. He wants to hold the verticals. Anytime you're in 3 deep coverage, the threat of four verticals is what you're most nervous about. Those guys have to understand the weakness of the coverage, and those seam players are responsible to jam the number two receiver and hold the seam and reroute him and try to push him out towards the number one receiver so the corner can do a better job of midpoint. Go ahead, your question. Uh, well, I, I started to do, it used to be always inside leverage, I started playing a hash divider rule based on, based on the split of this guy. A lot of times if we were getting something cut, we were probably, he was probably going shallow and somebody was coming back, so I didn't want him to be out leveraged so he'd line up outside, or if teams were bubbling and that kind of stuff and trying to crack the force player for that reason. So right now, if he was wider, if he was outside the hash, I'd play inside. If he's inside the hash, we'll play outside. Okay. All right, and again, odds are if he's nice and tight like that, they're not running a slant. They're not going to run it back in here, so you don't really need to worry about being inside. That's it. All right, so the ball's out. But I put this clip on here because I want to show you the technique on the stunt. Obviously, the ball's out, and we didn't get there, but this would be perfect. Okay, this kid right here was a kid who played for us at Temple. He spent three years on the scout team. I called, you know, he did a thousand days. I told him in solitary confinement, okay, but he was like. You know, I called him. I called him Stevie D. That's Stevie D. Not. He was like my third son because uh, 
he basically just spit out everything I told him. And he had to love him. And he ended up beating out a three-year starter to start the first three games of the season. Okay, we went 3-0, including a win against Connecticut with this guy start for us. Okay, and the other guy rotated in. And uh, it was because he did everything perfect. He said, hey, Steve, what do you do on, on, uh, on this fire zone right here? Chase the long stick. How tight? So tight I could steal his wallet. You know what I mean? And it was, it was unbelievable. And it's, it's always fun to coach kids like that, but there he is. All right, and this guy ran 4 9 5 oh. Okay, you can see he's not the best athlete in the world, but if that guy holds the ball one second longer, okay, we are beating the protection right here. The ball's out, but we're getting two on the back, and we're doing what we want to do, and we're also at the same time attacking the tight end side run, which was a high tendency for them. So we're in a good pressure there, run or pass, okay, to beat a protection or attack if they're going to try to run some kind of uh, zone play or anything back to the tight end side. All right, and again, the ball's out there, but that's the path that you want. Okay, again, this is closed. <clears throat> okay, I didn't guess right on this one, but they bailed me out here a little bit. Okay, uh, UConn was such a big power team and ran so much stuff to the tight end that um, I could call strong, and that would mean we want to blitz from the field, but that wouldn't guarantee me blitzing to the tight end side, which, which I was trying to do to attack the power in that game. Okay, they ran the counter, but these guys played it well right here from behind. So you can see it right now. Again, he's down. If it were pass, he'd be the seam player. That linebacker is reading out, which I'll get to in a minute. He'd be the three hook, and he'd be the seam. Same thing here with the leverage that we talked about uh, Bill, right here. So you get these inside the hash and a little bit outside. Yeah. All right, so we'll take a look at the uh, back side of it. All right, and again, this guy's got to get north. So here's the guy running the long stick. He's got to get all the way down the A-gap. Okay, there's the guy running the rack, one gap. There's the first round pick of the uh, New York Jets. So it's always easy to run this stuff when you have him. Okay, but that's Muhammad Wilkerson from Linden. Okay, this is Amara Kamara, who was from Newark. Okay, so we had a lot of success, obviously, with the Jersey guys. Okay, uh, what we did teach... Uh, the blitzer to that side, we called him a key blitzer, okay, and we read him out. He read out of the blitz, okay, if he got full flow away. Okay, so right now he's reading out right here. He sees the counter step, he sees the puller, and he's reading out. Good job by him getting over the top. All right, and there's the eighth guy. So even though they didn't start it at the tight end side, the safety that I'm getting down here for the run game to help us out, okay, ends up making the play. Okay, and get him in a position to make the play. So again, these are where we're trying to attack the tight end side. Okay, uh, this was Central Michigan. They had a big, big tendency to run the ball at the tight end side. Okay, on a rundown. So, uh, again, if we wanted to attack receiving strength, we could put a strong call on the front of the tag, and we'd run the same pressure from this side simply with the left or right call. Okay, in this case, we are attacking the tight end side. Okay, we are putting a tight call on the front of the call to attack the tight end side for the run game. All right, so that pressure is going to be run right there. So, again, the defensive end to the tight end side right now is going to run the long stick. The nose is going to run the rack away from the tight end side. This end doesn't need to do anything. Okay, Stevie D is going to chase the long stick so tight he can steal his, uh, steal his wallet. Okay, all right. Outside backers coming and the safety's coming down to be the extra guy to the route. So this time I guess right. All right, so again, Muhammad did a great job of, uh, of running the long stick. And again, he wants to see the next adjacent lineman. Okay, so he ends up in the A gap. This is a great shot of our nose here. Again, when he's running that rack stunt for you D-line coaches, okay, he's going to move and he's going to look at the guard. He's going to look at the next adjacent line, and if he's coming to him, he wants to redirect so he doesn't go two gaps and get, and get reached and get out of that A-gap because he's responsible for that gap. So, again, our D-line coach who's now at uh, Miami with us, Jeff, Jethro Franklin, does a great job of putting these guys on a grid and just working those combinations. And, he's, and he just calls out the pressures, and anytime he gets a free moment, these guys are constantly doing it with giving looks so they can get as many million reps at, at redirect and seeing all kinds of schemes. All right, and here you go, safety down, right here, okay? Good clip here for the outside linebacker, or if it's one of your down guys, a lot of you guys are running fire zones where, you know, your, your rush end is down, okay? And that guy takes a loop step, and then when that tackle crosses his face, he's your fold guy. He's your off-the-ball 4-3 linebacker. He's the guy that you want to fold and get in position to clean, to clean up, as you can see here, okay? And you get, we'll get a good shot of that in a minute. Okay, so I just showed you how to attack the tight end with the same pressure now. If it's a pass situation and you want to attack protection or you want to attack the zone read and teams are in a shotgun and those kind of things, now you can run it to the back. Okay, whether they put the back to the tight end side or whether they put the back away to the open side, okay, you can have it designed to, to attack the back. Excuse me. Bear with me, I'm just trying to get back to that shot for you. Okay, so in this case, 
Okay, we're running the pressure through the back, but if the back was over here, now this tackle would have the long stick, the nose would have the rack, he'd be contained, the wheel would blitz and the rush would blitz, and the SAM, okay, would now be in coverage, the safety would be down. So you just flip it. Okay, so you can attack whatever you want to get done that way. All right, so in this case, okay, we're attacking the back. Again, we want to try to do everything, okay, and hold the two shell as long as we can. We'd like these guys to stay on the hash as long as they can, and then utilize the quarterback indicator, which in this case was the hands up, and everybody should move and should look like they're on a string together, okay? <clears throat> All right, this is a good shot of the rush holding. So again, we want the mic nice and tight. <clears throat> Chase the long stick. They blocked out here in this case, okay? The rush, <clears throat> okay, should see this guy run the lat, and he should fold a little bit quicker, okay? And the will, again, we kind of teach him to do what we call fall back here, but he knows the whole movement's coming to him. Okay, and he really wants to kind of rope it, though. He wants to kind of lull the guy into thinking he's going that way, but then utilize the movement that's in front of him to cut the ball back and fall back. So we call that a fallback technique. Okay, but really the first place he'll show up, okay, on this blitz is the inside part of the C gap. Okay, so he'll take the A gap, he'll take the B gap, he'd have the C and he'd have the D. Okay. All right, in that case, 58 did a nice job, okay, of reading the mesh, okay, and seeing the ball pulled, okay, and making a tackle. All right, here we are again, attacking the back. Okay, this is a wildcat situation, so again, we would run this against it and, and stay in it. Again, you get a chance to see the end zone. There's that long stick right now, so good job here. Okay, by getting all the way down to the A gap, that's a two gap movement. Well done there. So again, I showed you how to attack the tight inside, how to attack the back. Now we can attack receiving strength. Okay, because if you want, if you're thinking it's a pass situation and you want to get your better cover guy down to receiving strength, okay, you can show this, get the safety down and get him over the slot because it's easier to hold the seams, okay, from high to low, okay, than it would be just being walked out at four yards, having somebody coming down. It's also a deterrent to the quarterback to try to hit that seam and you see the safety dropping in over number two. He's not going to throw that ball as opposed to that guy running past and around and bending behind somebody who's up at four yards. So, okay, in that case, you want to be in position where, where you're attacking strength. <laughs> All right, this is still a run situation. This is a really good shot of watching the rush end. And again, for you guys who, again, are 4-3 guys, you simply, if you're in an under front or if you're in what you know, we call a bench front, which just means putting our three technique into the boundary, the short side of the field, you can run this pressure as well. This is your sand, this is your end. Instead of this guy being in a zero, you have him as an, uh, <coughs> a shade and he runs the rack. This guy's a three technique, okay, and then he runs the lap back outside. So um, easy to fit both of those fronts. All right, this is a good shot of what I talked about earlier. So again, the coaching points is they have to understand the gaps they want to fit. He's the A gap player. He's chasing the long stick in the B gap. He's outside. The first place the will linebacker shows up is the C gap because these guys are taking care of their business. Okay, so if he gets run strong, he knows he's going to show up in the C gap. And now this guy, as the lap player, crosses his face and he knows the ball's going to be cut off he can fold, and he becomes your off-the-ball 4-3 wheel linebacker, being the cleanup guy. All right, so that's a good that's a good clip right there. Okay, I, I prefer 41 to hit it a little bit tighter and go ahead and spill that guy to the inside out, scrape her skin a little bit tighter. Okay, but look pretty well fit. Okay, so that's attacking from strength. Okay, this is against 20 personnel here versus the ride the side game again. Stevie D doing a great job of chasing a long stick. Okay, any edge blitzer. <coughs> Okay, any edge blitzer in the ride the side game, he's responsible for the quarterback. Okay, we like to get that guy nice and square if we can. Okay, I'd like him to be a little bit tighter here. Okay, we call it a no air policy, but I'd like him to have his hand at least as close to the end man on line of scrimmage there, so there's no there's no air between the end man on line of scrimmage and him. He's a little bit late, so I'd like him a little bit closer. But we want to be nice and square, okay, and we want to force a give read, and then we're trying to run the pressure, obviously, into the give. So we call it feeding the dog. We're really trying to feed the blitz. We're trying to give them a give read and blitz into it, so we have some people there to make a play. <coughs> Another good job here by the Will of falling back. He knows the blitz cutting him off, okay, and he's falling back. But again, really good track by the Mike linebacker here, okay, making it hard for, for uh, 25 to run anywhere, and a good job here. Again, if you can get yourself a first rounder from Linden, try to do that, and, and then you can make that play. All right, this is against Penn State. Again, this is from strength, okay, versus the bunch. We did have an ME on his play. Okay, I'll show you that, but it's one of those oh no no yes yes. 92. 
went the wrong way, but he ended up making a tackle. So I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 good, good, good job, right? No, no, yes, yes. All right, guy makes an ME and he makes a tackle for loss. You're like, all right, good job. But again, same coaching point, safety's down now to the bunch side. Okay, we wanted 92 to run the lat away from the call, away from the right call, so that 45 can fold back. Okay, watch four here, good job on the redirect. He's reading the adjacent man, he's reading the guard, takes one step, and now he gets himself an A gap. Nine's real high, but again, these guys are taking all the gaps that they're supposed to take. Mark. Yes? The so rule of thumb is 92 inside, 45 is next to right? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd like 92 to go the right way, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'd like, you know, 90, if 92 folds over here, if he runs his lat and takes a step outside, okay, I'd like him to go ahead and pin the hip and he'd be the guy to have no air. And now, now 92, uh, 45 sees him cut the ball off for him and it's going away. He can fold and then become the, the backside cutback player. So, yeah, and he's, he's, the, he's what we call the force player. Again, it's really important to not get into all our force rules, but at the end of the day, the scene players are the force player, and they're the guys responsible to, uh, to force the end run and keep the end run inside of them. So at the end of the day, 45 wouldn't go ahead and spill this block. He would go ahead and take it on with his inside shoulder and keep the ball inside. In this case, the other outside linebacker is the force player this side. Okay. This was a long, this was second and long. Okay, and again, I was running this for pass purposes, but, but as you can see here, it was good, uh, good burst to draw. Running it from strength. So again, just to, to, to recap with you guys, again, if you want to run out of a 4-3 front, you could shade this nose to this side to the field. You could play this guy in a three technique, and you could play this guy down and run the same exact pressure and just run it from the field. Okay, and just run it from the field. So it's easy to run with the same reason. Okay, now I just showed you with zone coverage. Okay, here we are running it with man coverage. Okay, so obviously th there are weaknesses to zone coverage. If you're giving away the blitz too early and you're playing off man and you're playing three under three deep and they see it, the quarter's gonna, quarterback's going to try and take access and throw the hitch and get the ball off and take five yards and get out of town. Okay, so, uh, and also if they're doing certain stuff like Penn State was doing here where they were getting a, a, an unbalanced set, okay, and they were flooding the zone in man coverage, we were going to be light one uh, in this game if we played zone. Okay, we were only going to have a seam defender and a three hook defender with three guys flooding the zone. So we chose to play, we chose to run this blitz, but we chose to play it as man. So we had everything covered on their naked games and those kind of things. So you can see the corner's running over with them now. So again, the same rules apply. Corner, who's the third player, now has number one. The safety, who was your scene player, now has number two. Okay? The will, in this case, who's not blitzing, has three. He has the tight end. Okay? The rush has the back, who's number four. You say, how is he going to cover him? This guy's on appeal blitz now. So if this backer blitzes and this guy would flare right now, he would come out of the blitz and take him, okay, to handle the rush in the corner has number one. So you can see how it worked out, okay. We ended up having the wheel covered and we ended up having all three levels uh, covered, okay. And at the same time, we attacked the protection, okay. We got two, two on their tight end, okay, and got a hit on the quarterback, okay. So, again, really important. The, the chasing the long stick and, and scraping so tight you can steal his wallet might, is not only great in the run game, but it's great in the pass game because you're running the direct line at the quarterback. You're going to hit him. Okay, most guys, what they want to do is they say, i got to run outside this guy, and they want to take, early on, they want to take their first step over there and widen, and all of a sudden they're coming from uh, you know, Hudson County. So good job here, again, of just chasing. I wish he would just come a little bit quicker. Okay, you might have sacked him, but again, we got to hit on a quarterback. Okay, and obviously the man coverage enabled us to do that. So that was helpful. All right, so again, I'm trying to give you some of the pressures that you can run. You have the pressure's name, now you can just work and change the coverage based on what you guys do. So you can run it as, as a fire zone 3 under 3 deep, or you can run it as man. Okay, this is now both inside linebackers with fire zone coverage. So now, okay, instead of bringing an outside linebacker and an inside linebacker, we're bringing an inside pressure. Okay, we're bringing both inside linebackers. So in this case, the Sam or your nickel, okay, would be the one scene player. Now your safety is going to drop down inside, okay, and be your three hook player, which is really nice because it's a good inside pressure. It's one of my favorite pressures, but you have a chance to go get a negative in the backfield with these two guys coming up the middle. You have a safety drop it down. In our case, our safety was a second round pick of the uh, Eagles. He was our best tackler, and he was great getting down in the box to come make plays. All right, so if it doesn't get past the first level, gets past the first level, he's got a chance to go ahead and make a play for a yard or two. And if it pops, at least you're in zone, you got a 3D uh, spoke behind it, you can get the ball on the ground and play another down. 
So it's one, of, it's one of these blitzes to me that have if teams like an interior run team or a zone team, okay, you got a chance to hit it on all the levels, okay, and if it, if it gets out the gate, okay, you're going to get it on the ground, they got a 10-yard gain, gain, you can get a chance to call them back down, okay, but you do have a chance to get them off track, okay, and make a play. So. All right, the one thing, the one adjustment that we make with this is we, we always say it's weak safety rotation, okay, in any two by one or two by two, but if they give us three by one, then the strong safety has to rotate down because he is the three hook player. That means he's going to match off a of number three. Okay, so you can see here, you can see why this guy was the 54th pick in the draft because he sees the cut split. The guy didn't even motion yet, and he's telling the safety right now he's motioning, so he knows he's going down, and there it is. Look, he sees him going, you, 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 and he's back in the post. You know, so that's why it's really important. Uh, that you get your smart football players back to safety, they got to run the show back there. Okay? All right, this was a pass situation. Okay? So the leverage should have been. <coughs> right now, he's outside of number two, he's inside of number one. Okay, on the motion, he could have he widened, which he did here a little bit. Okay, and he's trying to get a jam and a reroute. Okay? The three hook player doesn't need to take three vertically because we've got post player. Okay, we've got a post player. It's not like cover two where you've got two high safeties in the middle of the field's open. In this case, the middle of the field is closed. Okay, so he can just deliver him with height to that level. Okay, <coughs> this pressure, it's really important, okay, that the coaching point that you get in the pass game to your end and tackles, okay, we tell them to rush high and wide. Okay, we want the end and the tackle since they're the contained rushers. Okay, we want them to understand that we want, we want your best pass rush and don't cut it off because what's going to happen is if you get pressure up the middle, okay, that guy's going to get out of the pocket. Okay, and if you stop before the level of the quarterback, you're going to allow him to get out of the pocket. If you keep coming and you get your best rush, okay, and you get high and wide and you go, okay, you'll have a chance now if he is flush to get a sack. Okay, but too many times they want to stop and they want to look if they're, if they're stopped on the first deal. Okay, Muhammad's just powering him back right here in this case. Okay, but the stunt, you can run two different stunts. In this case, we're sending the nose back to strength or back to the field. He's going two gaps. Okay, the nose is going from head up. Okay, all the way out to the B gap. The mic is hitting the opposite A gap, and then the will linebacker is going to be in the front side A gap. Okay, the other way to run it is send the nose away from the strength side, send him to the A gap here, take the mic, and plug him in the A gap here, and then bring the will all the way around the B gap. So you can run either one of those stunts by naming them. Okay, and we run them both. Uh, we like we like to run this stunt more so in in the run game. I like this when we're getting the zone read or we're getting an inside run. Okay, and I like to go ahead and run the other stunt where we're, where we're sending the front side linebacker. I like to go ahead and run him uh, towards the protection or towards the back to try to get two, two inside linebackers uh, on the back, try to get two on one to beat the protection. Okay? In this case, it worked out fine anyway. I was thinking run, but we ended up getting one on the back. You always want to show, Coach? We don't. I'd rather, I'd rather not. I'd rather hit it on the run. I'd rather hit it on the run. I'd rather not. But, but what we do want is you want that penetrator to have his pads down and be violent. He's the guy that's got to go ahead and he's got to get his toes north when he gets there. So uh, we'd like him to get up there and, and, and just go ahead and get after him. Okay, get his toes up the field. He's always going first? But Mike is always the guy that's going first. So whether he go ahead, goes ahead and blitzes the front side A gap in this case or the opposite side A gap. And then the will is our key blitzer in this blitz. Meaning if, if uh, the back comes to him in the run game here or two backs, both backs come to him, he will read out. Okay, he will read out. So he's our key blitzer. Okay, the will. In this case, he's going right through the back. You know, so whether it was a run, if they ran, they ran a draw play, we we're going to tackle it. In this case, he's got a little bit of a one-on-one, -on -one, and he's got a chance to beat him when we get pressure in his face. Okay, again, here we are. Normally, weak safety rotation. They went formation in the sideline with us, but it doesn't really matter because this guy can now play. The scene, he can come down and we just we just exchange responsibilities. We make a sky call, he plays the scene, and he plays off a of number three who he's standing on. Okay, this outside linebacker. All right, you can see it working here versus zone read. Okay, in this case, okay, we decided to attack the, the tight end side. So you can get the penetrator to run the tight end side. So he's just going to give him a call to tell him to go left or right away from whatever way you want to attack. These two guys know they're contained rushers and they're just playing their gap. So the game is really between the three guys right here. And we run two stunts. We run them all year. We run them in the offseason. We try to get as good as we possibly can. We have them go out there in the summer on their own and run them on big bags, get used to getting north, making the calls, and doing all that kind of stuff, and, it's, and that's it. And we decide based on game plan, personnel, what plays we're getting, which stunts we want to run versus which. 
Okay. In this game, we want we, we wanted to attack the tight end side. Okay. Here it is versus zone read. I'll go to the end zone since you guys can see it. But again, you see the weak safety dropping in. Okay, and this is where I like it because he's the cleanup guy in the second level that they can't block. All right, so we send the nose all the way to the opposite B gap. He got cut off here. Okay, again, so some, sometimes this blitz really works a lot better at a shaded front, particularly for the nose, because if you're in a if you're in the three four, he's head up now. The center's responsible to take him wherever way he wants to go. It's, it's a little easier for him than if he's lined up in a shade now and he crosses his face, or the guard's got to deal with him now. Now he's shading, and all of a sudden he crosses the guard's face. Neither one of them are ready for him, and they're kind of in no man's land. So again, I'd like to see him cheat in the line to execute, but. He's got to get to the B gap. He's the opposite A. Two is the tackler. All right, and then five is the cleanup guy. Okay, if the, if the thing were to pop, he's the guy that's unblocked. Okay, and then if it were to pop through all those levels, we got three deep. We got corner, post safety, and everybody else to get it on the ground. So again, as opposed to just running blitz where you're going to put bring six or seven people, you got all your safeties up at six and eight yards. If something pops, it could be a 70 yard run and be to the house. Here you're going ahead and you're taking a, a, a risk a little bit with the pressure, but you got a chance to get a negative on the first level. You got a chance to clean it up on a second level, and if, and if it hits through there, you're going to get it on the ground. And what's the worst thing that happened? They got a first down. They got to do that, you know, seven times to go score a touchdown on you. So, this is a pressure that I really like. All right, this is what I talked about here with Sky Force. So, uh, we can go ahead. Sometimes we'll play the, the Sam out here, and we'll, we'll, we'll disguise it with too high, and we'll drop the safety in because he's the three hook defender, and the Sam would be out here to be the scene player, or. If we were worried about them attacking the tight end side run, okay, I could tag this call with the sky call in the end, which means if they came out in the three by one, we'd call sky, which would mean he would now be the force player and the scene player, and he stays on the tight end because I don't want to vacate the tight end. So those guys are interchangeable. He could be walked out here, and you could drop him in, or you could keep him on the tight end, and they just exchange jobs. Nothing changes inside, but in this case, we didn't want to vacate the tight end area. Again, so the nose has got to get all the way to the B gap, okay? 53 has got to get to the opposite A, and in this case, one is not blocked, okay? The thing you lose when you go with a sky call is you don't have the safety. You don't have the safety down to help clean it up. So that's what you got to be aware of, but you want to be able to have these guys, okay, be real aggressive and, and blow their gaps so that they can cut the ball off over here like I talked about earlier, and now your rush and your Sam become the full guys. So you don't have seven guys up on the line of scrimmage. You have you have layers of guys. So you have these guys trying to penetrate inside. These guys are blowing the gap really to get up the field because if it is pass, you want them to be high and wide. If it is run, you want them to cut the ball off and not get outside so that these guys can go ahead and fold. If you want to go ahead and line and execute, you can cheat this guy off the ball a little bit. You can put his toes back at the heels of the defensive lineman to ensure that. So he's kind of off the ball by a yard a little bit. Okay, and then, and then you can fold him back. Okay. Okay, same blitz with man coverage. Okay, now obviously, if you're playing personnel, this is 11 personnel. The only way we can do it with man coverage now is if we put a nickel in the game or else we have one of our linebackers covering a wide out, which we don't want to do. So we match that personnel in this case. Okay, so let's say you're playing a spread team uh, who's going to be nothing but three wides and four wides the whole game. Uh, we, we go ahead and we'll just take our Sam out of the game and we'll go ahead and put what we call a star in the game. And the rest of the defense remains the same. It's just star for Sam. And then we have a chance now, uh, because we have that extra guy in the game who can cover, we have a chance to run more man pressures, okay, as opposed to zone pressures with that guy in the game. So we might make a decision going into a week and saying, we're only seeing 11 and 10 personnel, three and four wides. Let's play these guys in, in nickel personnel the whole game, okay, and get another fast guy on the field to be able to run. So in this case, you can see this is corner star safety now. So we have three guys covering. We're still running the same pressure, okay. This corner has him, okay, and the rush has the back. So he's got the back. He's got number one. So we have a way, this is what we call anchored man, meaning the corners do not travel, okay, unless their guy ran over the top like the guy did against Penn State, okay, but they're not going to travel, so we're trying to make it look like zone. We're not getting the corners over to give away that it's man. And again, he plays number one, okay, the star can go ahead and play number two, the safety's the three hook player, now he plays number three. So their coverage in the zone pressure matches exactly with the man pressure. So you can get in and out of it and nothing changes up front. Okay, his same deal right now is he's the scene player, which means he plays off a of number two. Well, that's number two, one and two, and he's got number one. All right, in this case, they ran the ball. Same thing, again, good versus zone reads. 
Mark, on this tight end side, is he seven tech? Is he in gap? This guy? Yeah. He's a five. Okay. okay. He's a five and versus three man surface we've 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 widened them. Okay, we've widened them before because a lot of times we just make the call so we don't confuse the guys, but a lot of times we got the walked out linebacker and we